apologize for the delay. We had some technical difficulties. What time is it like? 737. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call for attendance, please. Here. Sandy. Here. Kelly. Here. Ken. Here. Lori. Here. Motion to approve the consent agenda. The agenda first. I'll make a motion to approve the regular agenda as presented. Oh. Take off. I'm sorry. Um, let's let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Redo. Motion um, to approve the agenda. Um, I would like to remove from the agenda the motion to approve contract with William Clausen um, at this point. I, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. one, one quick question. On the agenda that I received in the mail, there were four unfinished business items. On the one that the audience received, there are three. Correct. And I sent you an email explaining why that was taken off. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay. Any other changes to the agenda? Uh, we need to vote on taking it off. I made a motion to take it off. Michael, Michael seconded. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Well, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Item E, motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Open session. Anyone to adjust the board with agenda items only? Moving on to unfinished business. <coughs> Motion to approve Township Garage Yard Sale Ordinance. Well, can we have some discussion on that first? I need a motion first. Okay. All right, I'll make the motion to, to approve the Township uh, Ordinance. Okay, discussion, Michael? Well, it's a nicely designed ordinance, uh, very clear right up until the very end. Um, it's a Section 5 penalties for Board of Trustees to determine. However, it doesn't mention any penalties. Um, so is that something that's going to be taking place later? That's for the, if the Board of Trustees want to discuss it and determine what the penalties are. So, so the penalties would be decided right now? With the Board. Okay. Well, I mean, what are some of the suggested penalties that you might have? What are yours? Well, the last month it was tabled because there didn't appear to be enough information. I think if there's going to be penalties like this, it probably would be best to table it another month and look around at some of the similar ordinances in other townships and municipalities to see what their penalties are so we can pick and choose which the ones the best are. That's very good. Are you done? Yes. Sandy, do you have anything? Mm -hmm. um, I feel that I appreciate what the Planning Commission was doing with the garage sale ordinance, but after I read it, I didn't feel that it was 
what I was looking for with regards to the complaints that we have from the residents. We don't really have any issues with residents complaining about garage sales. It's more or less the continuation of what certain people want to call garage sales so that they can basically have a, a private business or a residential business every day. <coughs> so, uh, I, I, I like the garage sale ordinance, but I, that's not what I was looking for after I read it. I just think that it was more of a blood issue that I was looking into. And after I looked through all my complaints in there, I didn't really have that many. I didn't have any that was that were complaining about garage sales. I had more or less people that were having continuous garage sales. And I agree with the limitations, but then I don't think it's fair uh, with the resi other residents that yeah, do them on a weekend basis, I guess is what I'm saying. Right. Um, when I read the purpose, which was um, Cadigo Township has instituted a garage slash yard sale ordinance due to the prolonged display of goods for sale for extended lengths of time and advertising signs forgotten and left on display past the date of the sale. That's not what this is addressing. And I think we have an ordinance already with regard to people selling out of their yard in a residential area. So I don't think that this addresses what it was that we were looking at. So I think. So you want to table it so that. Table it until we get more information and, and try and figure out. What do you think? Kind of exactly are you what done? want to do. Sure. Let's vote. We already have a motion to vote. Oh, with discussion. So, uh, well, then I'll amend the uh, motion to table the um, uh, township yardage sale ordinance until more information can be attained. To make it a second. Okay, motion dies for the support. So now we vote on the original one. <clears throat> that, that's correct. That's the way it should be. So hold on. Well, I'm sorry. I know I was waiting for her. So I thought you were done. Almost. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Okay. Motion to approve township garage yard sale ordinance. Motion was by Michael and seconded by Sandy. All in favor? Opposed? Nay. 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 Item number two, motion to approve Paul Kim. No. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the fall cleanup. Uh, I'll second. Discussion? Well, I talked with Amtera, and uh, they're pleased with the way things worked out at the special meeting. And... Um, at the special meeting? Yes. You know the, the minutes that we approved? The with Gary. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the, the cleanup. Clean <laughs> I was like, clean what? Um, but uh, uh, Gary Veristo, very nice. He gave us the choice of September 6th or September 13th. Um, I personally feel based on the spring cleanup, uh, it, would, it would be much better to probably have it on mm -hmm. one day on one day rather than two the the turnout was much larger on the first day um, I think to set the hours 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. would work out great uh, again uh, one thing I can say and it looks like um, <coughs> just about everyone I've said this to is in agreement um, on the spring cleanup almost immediately the first bin was filled up and we had to uh, take all the tires out of that bin and put them off to the side and then have metal off to the side So it, it seems like we obviously need one for tires one for metal and at least two for other garbage and junk, so uh, 
I, I think uh, those are the, the minimum requirements. <coughs> no. Nope, it would be free to taxpayers again. Ken, do you have anything? Uh, when I came over here, I was over three times. I didn't see anything that couldn't have been put out by the road that was on this particular cleanup. Uh, and it seemed like uh, Tony Spadafore and Matt Kowalczyk were working very hard at it, and Sue Biscorner was here. Uh, but it was just basically the same stuff that MTR picks up on the side of the road every morning or every Monday morning. Well, I mean, those tires aren't exactly things that you can set out by the road. Also, one person brought a um, a porta potty. That's not something that's taken away. Um, and just in case anyone is was wondering, there was number two in it. Not exactly the most, uh, you know, not something that you want to see when you open it. Um, there were plenty of uh, larger items uh, that could not be put by the road. I mean, considering it cost the taxpayers nothing, we got a really nice turnout for things like concrete uh, and um, you know some of those other large things. There's no reason not to when you got someone, you know, the people to do it. Lori, do you have anything? Um, I know that when we had large items, we just called them and the thing could come up. And the paint cans, you can put the paint cans out by the road if you open them up to show that you have the sand and the kitty litter in there. <coughs> I don't, um, I wasn't here that weekend, but from what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, it was kind of hard to get volunteers. Yeah, we, we had a, <coughs> excuse me, a lack of volunteers. No, they're, they're the first year, that this, this last cleanup, right? But, well, I'm just telling so, uh, to you know, to explain the resources needed. Um, at, during the 2013 uh, um, spring cleanup, we had me, Tony Spedafore, my mom, Susan Gladwell, and a young cr fellow named Chris Baker, just a 14 year old kid. We did fine. Um, then <laughs> this time. We had uh, a lot more people. Most of them were doing things like cutting trees and picking up, you know, garbage along the ditches. All very, you know, very valuable, important duties. But the people actually putting things in the garbage and, you know, lifting, there was only a handful of people. So I mean, you don't really need a lot of resources. The main thing is just to make that option available to the taxpayers. Laurie, you need to fill in for me. Hopefully, that's not my computer. What was your idea of what we saw here? <coughs> I, I felt that we could use more <coughs> volunteers. I was running around, I was going and getting stuff and coming back, but um, the first day was better than the second day. The second day was very slow and Take in that much stuff. Okay. Anybody else have any discussion? Well, is it, you know, advertising it in the <coughs> newsletter, that's another nice advantage of approving it right now. Uh, because previously, even though there was um, advertisement in the um, newspapers, you know, the, they were still on the small side. The one in the, the Blue Water community for the Times Herald only printed once. The real key issue is having it in the newsletter, so that way everyone has it. Uh, yes. I, I think we'd get a huge turnout if we could do that. Okay. Because I have an email from you that was sent to me from the editors of the papers that I advertised on, and you stated that I never contacted them and that you were told no advertisement was given. Um, <clears throat> I also have here my documentation showing that the advertisement was in fact in the paper. Um, it was dated April 10th when I sent both the Times Herald and The Voice with regards to the section and the advertisement that we put in. So I don't understand how you had that. And then plus I also have the actual newspaper clippings of where they're put in. So I'm quite, I'm not quite sure about 
how we would advertise it, being that I advertised it, and Mr. Zorn said that I didn't, and then we have all the documentation, so that's my concern with that. Well, the, to answer your question briefly, um, with the voice, it did appear in the voice. However, the Blue Water Shopper, it appeared once when I contacted them. I didn't see it after that. Okay, but you stated to the editors that I never contacted them and that you were told this, and then you also put it in your newspaper article. Well, I, and now I, you're saying that, so that's just... Well, I'm simply going to tell you a woman named Mary Jo from the Times Herald. That's what I was told. So, but I, but I don't want to argue about something this, you know, petty. I it's want not to. Petty to me, Michael. Well, the when the key. I never did something instead of calling me and asking me. Well, the key is to make sure it's advertised in the township newsletter and make sure that the oh, people. Oh, no, that's key. It's before the key. I think what the problem is is that um, I was accused of things that did not happen, and. Supervisor Caselli was accused of things that did not happen, and I don't appreciate that. Well, and I, I, I don't know what all, how all of a sudden we went from trying to help well, having a fall cleanup we're to... We're talking about helping the fall cleanup, but that kind of deters people from wanting to come and help with the fall cleanup if they're going to be accused of things that they haven't done. And when I said that I was going to place the ads in the paper, and I did, and for you to send emails out to editors and other people, and there's one, two, three, like 10 people here claiming that I didn't, instead of contacting me, that I have a problem with because I don't want to spend my time again making sure that I set all of this up, it gets advertised, and then you're going to put out there that I didn't do it. Well, again, I'm not going to argue. I would actually like an apology is what I'd like, that you were incorrect. Well, one thing that I noticed at the last um, cleanup mm -hmm. was that almost every vehicle that pulled into the drive, Mr. Zorn hightailed it over there, and when I overheard him talking, he was bad nothing the rest of the board. I'm not helping with a cleanup. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get subjected to that anymore. Uh, if I might, my complaint uh, was apologizing to the people that there were only two bins there because there was not anything. That you had to put metal off to the side. Um, you could not but put it. Gary spoke to you about that, and I can have him at the next meeting because I did ask him for three, and he specifically told you on the phone conversation that I did request three. And you're not mentioning that right now, are you? What I'm mentioning is yeah, I heard on the telephone. It's Tara's fault, not mine. Well, regardless, I hadn't heard it at the, uh, what the correct story about what your role was, other than. Yes, you have. Yes, other you than. Because Gary told you. So we're going to move this along and make a vote. Uh, can you restate the motion, please? Yes. Uh, not you, Lori. She's the clerk. Well, it, we're. We're past the discussion portion, so mm -hmm. I'd like Can to you restate it? So I, well, I, I don't have every word written down because I rely on the tape, but I would also like, since Mr. Zorn came up with the uh, motion, to just restate it because this is the so final motion. The right. Yes. Um, I would uh, like to um, approve the fall cleanup for the benefit of the taxpayers with tax free and with uh, uh, announcement placed in the newsletter. For September 13th. Motion to approve sewer bill relief due to water leak in the amount of $195. Okay, this one was before. Oh, I'll make a motion to approve a sewer bill relief due to water leak in the amount of $195. I'll second that. Discussion? This yep. was um, in the packet last month, and I, I, it's my understanding there was a little confusion because there was uh, a wrong address on the bill. 
What this is, is a person had a water leak and the way the township bills for sewer is how much water goes into the household. If you have a leak and it goes out into the ground, you don't really have any way of telling how much didn't go into the sewer. But the sewer bill is, re is um, based on the amount that went into the household. So what we normally do, past practices, is to look at the average usage over a, a period of time and then determine how much over their usage in water purchase it was. In this case, their average is six per quarter, and they had 45 on the last bill. So that's an over of 39 units. The problem comes in in that <coughs> they are now charged for sewer when they didn't utilize the sewer. So what we do is just calculate out it's $5 per unit per sewer, which comes out to $195. And this person um, submitted the bill because we request some form of proving that they had some kind of a problem. And on that is where you see that uh, Elginac instead of Marine City or Cotterville address. And that's what that uh, receipt is for. <coughs> no, no, at this time. Sandy? No. Michael? Well, I'm just wondering what, what makes it something that we're talking about this month as compared to not last month? Because I wasn't here to explain it. Okay. All in favor to approve sewer bill relief due to water leak in the amount of 195. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passed. <coughs> New business. <coughs> Presentation by Telemar Bank to change tax account from fifth third to Telemar. Well, currently the township uses two banks, fifth third and Telemar, for our general and our tax account. I would like to go to one bank, Palmer, for both both their accounts. So this is Julie she's from Palmer Bank. Hi, I'm Julie Gus. I'm the Managing Director of Public Funds for Palmer Bank and Trust. We're based in Troy, Michigan. We have a trade of <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie Gust, and I'm the Managing Director of Public Funds for Town Bank and Trust for Troy, Michigan, with a very strong presence here in St. Clair County. We've had the Patrickville Township um, operating funds for many years, with the exception of tax accounts, which has held it past their account. So Sandy and my colleagues, Bobby Fisher and Whitney Swanson, and I have been in discussions with Sandy in regards to consolidating those so that all of the accounts are here at uh, Telma for simple operating reasons. It just makes lots of logistical sense. Um, I don't know how much more detail. No, that's, yeah. It, you know, a lot of times people pay their tax bills with their water bills, which we can't take at the return them. They're two different banks. So um, eventually to get the direct deposit, okay. which would. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because it's expensive <coughs> amount of as opposed to having her physically go from bank to bank. And both banks I use daily, so I have to go to two different, you know, I think that residents would uh, benefit. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding that if somebody wants to pay their taxes and the water bill at the same time. They have to write separate checks. They have to write two separate checks instead mm -hmm. of one, and what we're trying to do is get so they can only, that Correct. they if can they, just write one check. Correct. If they choose, yes. And like I said, eventually Mr. I Bingaman? get the direct deposit. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, now, by having it all at your bank versus two banks, what does that do with the overall, should there be a bank failure or something <coughs> for insurance, the FDIC? Um, well, it's my, um, the one thing I don't believe everything is with us. Like if, no, if it went over right. there, if she um, did move the tax money over to you, what would that do <coughs> to the overall well, account? It's um, FDIC insurance covers the first $250,000. Obviously, you're well above that. But that's the more for Michigan News account. And by that I mean, um, I, our department deals with probably 300 municipalities across the state of Michigan. We represent almost half a billion dollars in investments. We collateralize nothing. Uh, 
because Michigan doesn't require collateralization. So what that is is extra money, extra insurance over and above the FDIC. What you can be confident of is that Michigan banks um, do have a much more rigorous charter uh, system than other banks across the country, meaning it's tougher to open a bank in Michigan. We have uh, very stringent policies on um, the, just the actual procedure. So anybody can hang a shingle in other states. <coughs> That's not the case here in Michigan. The, the, probably the smartest and uh, most stringent thing that you can do, Sandy's done, and that is uh, her due diligence. She's gotten to know us, she's gotten to know our bank, and who we're all about. That's what I'm here to answer questions too. If, if I can elaborate any more for you, please let me know. But, um, through her participation with the Michigan Municipal Treasurer's Association, uh, the St. Clair County Treasurer's Association, she's gotten to know her banks. Not just me, but all the banks in the community. Um, and logistically, fiscally, efficiency-wise, it makes more sense, in my humble opinion, that she does consolidate with our bank. Yet I think she could answer questions pretty um, confidently <coughs> on the financial structure of our bank. I did provide the board with um, the <coughs> information on our financials. It includes an outside agency, which is um, Bauer Bank Rating Agency. So it's not just my financials that I'm giving, but their opinion. And on a scale of one to five, five being the highest, we've been a five-star bank since we were created about six years ago. And I think that's because of our strong management team. Um, we're very, very conservative. Um, all of the executive management team is um, true bankers. Surprisingly, you might um, it might surprise you to know that many banks' management team are not bankers, but <laughs> they're just kind of running business. Um, we're kind of all in the our place. And we're very committed to the community. So we are out in front of, um, you know, township boards like yourself, um, very active in St. Clark County community events we like to participate in. Um, but back to your <coughs> original question, in order to ensure every penny of the township money, you literally have to place it all over the state of Michigan, which really isn't feasible. You know what I mean? Break it down into two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month. There's a, a way to do that, and it's called uh, the CDARS program. And banks would pay an outside firm, a native promontory um, network agency, and you'd pay them, and they would place the money for you all over the country. Um, Michigan State Legislature has made an exception, or nearly their investment dollars can't leave the state of Michigan. With the exception of this promontory group, they can place it all over the country, and that can hence get every penny insured. But it's so expensive to do that in this great environment right now, you virtually make nothing on your, on your top. When she does go to the credit cards where people can just online pay their taxes and things, are you going to work with her so that it just comes direct to you? Or? I wasn't aware of online tax payments. Is that what you're yeah, in we, the future? We, yeah, we do that now. But um, yeah, we do the ACH right now. And that's one of the reasons I also want to switch. Because oh, oh, if the automatic payments, which would help the general account too. With um, taxes, maybe we could start that with, oh. since we're paying the fee already. Gotcha. With your, sorry, your well, that you would be there to help her. Oh, uh, that's the a good bank. thing about Tom, where they yeah. have a network of people that will help us. They'll come here and teach us new we ideas, do. and I mean, you know. Can I? Oh, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> because we are one of the few banks that has a dedicated public fund group, and unlike other banks, um, many have them, but many don't. So I'm the director of a group. <clears throat> probably seven or eight people across the Midwest, and all we deal with is municipalities. So we deal with cities, townships, counties, um, you know, port authorities, libraries, that type of thing. Um, because you are very specific, and I, we think you do need special attention. We have a different um, investment code that we need to adhere to. We will promise that we'll comply with that investment code. Um, we, are, we calculate your interest a little differently so that you earn a higher yield. Uh, we have more competitive pricing for townships and cities and schools and things like that. Um, and we're, we just are more kind of boots on the ground as far as things like tonight. You know, I, I don't think you want a typical branch manager here tonight or 
Well, prior to this board, they, this township has all used two or three different banks mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. And I, I you know, we were never questioned. Are there a lot of townships that, that have you do everything for them? No, none. Me, me, Meaning, me, like, if we come to you, we're going to be the first one that has all of our banking with you? Oh, no. Oh, that's, that's not all the banking. That's, um, that's not all the banking. It's not. That's just the I have, I have many CDR investments <coughs> yeah. uh, in many five or and six different banks. I can write by the treasurer for that. She's doing, like I mentioned, she's educating herself through the Michigan Municipal Treasurer's Group. She is, and I, I know this because I'm at those same meetings with her. You know, when I'm at these same <coughs> luncheons and conferences and educational seminars, so she's educating herself. So she knows that it's not prudent to have every penny with the same bank, and she doesn't. So we talked, what we're talking about tonight are the operational accounts where you actually transate the business, but then your excess funds are invested elsewhere. At our encouragement, we don't think that you should have everything. We, we always advise our clients okay. to, um, to spread around. Um, they, if it's drilled in once, it's drilled in a million times that they, um, obviously safety is the first. Always, always, always. You, you don't want to be the one that ends up in the paper because you try to get better rate. <laughs> right. Well, the good thing about our tax account, the money's in and out. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't stay in there very long. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make the motion that we take our general fund account and move it from Fifth Third Bank to Tomer Bank and Trust. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. A little goodies back there? Okay. Pens. Your pens. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Item number two, discussion with Debbie Herity, I apologize, from the St. Clair County Council on Aging, referring to the millage renewal in August. Hi. Is this directed at me? <laughs> <laughs> no. You get your number, <laughs> Good evening, council members. Um, I'm Laura Newsom, executive director of the Council on Aging. <laughs> And with me this evening is Debbie Harity, who is the supervisor of the Washington Life Center. We are here this evening with a very brief but very important message. The Senior Citizen Service Millage is on the ballot at the August 5th primary. It is a renewal, and that's the important word, renewal. It will not cost taxpayers one penny more than they have been paying for the last two years. Uh, there is something a little different about this renewal, however. In 2010, we passed the renewal of a half mill that was for a four-year period to renew in 2014, thus this August. By 2012, we had collected enough data to be able to go back to the voters and ask for an increase. We had not had an increase for 26 years, so in 2012, we asked for a 0.3 increase, which created a new question. So what we're doing now is going back um, to take the 0.5 and the 0.3 and roll that into one question, which will now be for the next four years if it passes, instead of having the two questions. But again, it's still a renewal that people have been paying for the 2010 through the 2014 and the 2012 through 2014. So together they make up the point eight. This millage is of prime importance for seniors to be able to continue living independently in their homes, which is what seniors want to do. I'll give you an example of how important these millage dollars are. We all remember last year when the federal government shut down. The Council on Aging lost $39,000 in four days. But because the senior millage was in place, the seniors that were receiving service 
through Council on Aging and the other agencies that received these millage dollars did not skip a beat. No senior missed a meal, a ride, a bath, a program because the millage was in place. I am involved with the statewide group and I know agencies that diminished service during that time or had to actually close down for um, up to that two week period that the federal government was closed. In St. Clair County, our seniors didn't have to suffer that because we had the millage. Many counties across the state do not have a millage. And so it, it works extremely well for our seniors. As I said, there are seven agencies that receive these funds. Council on Aging gets the lion's share because we do the lion's share of the service. So we would really appreciate support. Cotterville is one of the places across this county I looked it up. From the beginning of the millage for senior citizens, you have always been supported. And we're grateful for that. We strongly believe that communities like Cotterville that care for their elderly and their children are better places to live. And this has been one of those for many years. So again, the choice will be yours. Um, I will say that if you do um, support this and would like to see services for seniors to continue, um, please tell your friends and your neighbors, your children, everybody you know, because raising awareness is the answer to this so that everybody will understand how important it is. Um, I talk to everyone. Uh, perfect strangers in the Kroger lineup. Uh, I trap people in elevators. I do whatever it is I have to do to get the word across how important this is. I called my son this week and said, asked if he and his wife would like to go to dinner with us on Saturday. And he said, Mom, are you going to talk to perfect strangers in the restaurant about the millage? <laughs> I said, probably. <laughs> but they'll go because they also support this. So. Are there any questions about this millage? All I can say is that I was involved in home care for 12 years and we had probably out of the 110 patients that we had, about 57 of them were continued area on aging mm -hmm. patients and without that funding they would not get their lunches, they would not get their bathing, they would not get, and I, I've seen it firsthand and I fully support it. Thank you very much. You know, growing old is in the club you can just choose to join. And, uh, and it, but it's good to know that when we get there, I'm there now myself. Um, but as it, when we all get to be seniors, we all know someone who is a senior and is getting service. But it's good to know that it'll be there when we get there as well. So thank you for your support. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, item number three, discussion of ISO survey. <coughs> We're going to have Chief Joe Slinkster from the Marine City Fire Authority come up and explain exactly what the ISO survey is. You know, a lot of our residents have contacted us with regards to insurance information that and we've been working on it in the background, so now it's coming to a... Um, ISO uh, contacted me. They want to do a review of our fire station, our fire district area, um, all four municipalities. Um, what they have asked for is a map of each municipality. Um, I approached uh, Supervisor Sally, um, and the township didn't have one um, with all the new hydrants on it. Um, the last survey was done in '95, and um, right now our rating is out of 10, I believe possibly go down, um, what the gentleman said, to having um, hydrants throughout the, the township now. Um, what they're requiring is a map that I did um, give to Supervisor Kelly. Um, it is of all four municipalities. It has um, a number of the hydrants on there, not exact, but pretty close um, to what um, road they're on. Um, the only thing I learned <coughs> from the township, or Ira Township, is a flow test um, of the hydrants to tell how many gallons per minute come out of the hydrants and um, what kind of um, plan they have of doing this every one, two, three to five years um, doing these flow tests. 
Um, speaking with the city of Marine City, they are going to do it every two years. Um, when they flush the hydrants in the summer or springtime, they are going to do a flow test on each one. What they also ask is um, a GPS of each hydrant. Um, and I did speak to the guy, and he's not going to require it this time. Um, the city does have a GPS of each of their hydrants through the county. Um, it's something that maybe we can, myself and Supervisor Caselli can speak to uh, emergency management about, is having the newer hydrants um, GPS for the next ISO rating that they do. They just did the city of Albanac, and their rating is possibly going to change, go up or down um, half a point. And the, the townships does too, which will relieve some of the insurance burden on the residents. Um, in the process of doing all the inventory of the station, each truck, um, and one thing that's a factor is having full time to pay down call firefighters. You have no technical full time at this time. Any questions? Uh, I, this map costs about fifteen dollars compared to all five grand that you guys are <laughs> looking to maybe spend or turn down one of the other. But you're more than welcome to have this map. Um, I have another one, and we will update the hydrants that are on Mayor Road. And I totally forgot all about them. And Broadbridge, Broadbridge. Yeah, we too. went. We went out there today. Yeah, and did the job. But that's all right. I mean, most right. of it was. But he, um, at first he told me it had to be a kind of a professional map. Right, when he and sent it. And when I talked to him again, he said it can be handwritten on a scratch piece of paper if you want it. So we. That's basically the same thing we got when we called this afternoon. So this will be sufficient for what he needs, which will be in July. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Looks like good, very nice uh, map. Looks very detailed. Do you want to discuss anything with regards to the map? Sure. Good evening. Sir Red Safe with Huron Consultants, so the Township Engineer. Um, I did receive the ISO document stating what uh, uh, requirements that they need to see on the map, and uh, that's why we put the proposal back to the supervisor. Um, they actually did state for their communication they want all fire fire hydrants, main sizes valves, pressure zones, boundaries, and supply and storage facility, which we she won't have. Um, normally, for other municipalities, what we do is, uh, just like the fire chief said, uh, we would go on and GPS these structures, uh, picking up all the existing hydrants, the valves, um, and then show them on the map with the water main lines uh, uh, superimposed and their sizes indicated. Uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, Chief, the only hydrants are shown on this map with the, with the lines. Just no valves. Yeah. No okay. Um, that's, that was our proposal to send a survey crew out and actually GPS everything uh, so we didn't have that out trying to Now, this is the first step, actually, other municipalities, what, what they use this map for is electronic for. Uh, the reliability study, which is required every five or six years by the state, and also the master planning for your system, which is also required to be updated by every five years. And it's actually listed on the ISO communication as one item under two, item two, does the water department use hydraulic modeling, which we don't. Um, So this is basically the first step, is to map the, the township facilities on, on an electronic map that we can use in the future for hydraulic modeling and, and uh, master planning. And if I understood correctly, uh, or in my understanding, I so rate your system based on the number of facilities mapped or you know, on the correct location, just in case if something happened so your, your liability will go down. And uh, that's 
we we put that proposal together for your consideration. If, if this map is acceptable for this rating, so we've got what a five year span to get to have you get the other ones done. The ISO come more frequently than five years, but the state does require a reliability study to be updated every five years. I don't know when was the last one submitted, and I have no record of that. 1995. 95. So nine years. It's been almost 10 years uh, since he did the last one. Pat. With 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. I'm an engineer. I can't do it. <laughs> I guess I can't either. Just because we took math, doesn't mean how to do it. <laughs> Pat. Excuse me, I have a question. Pat, when you did the renewal of the um, master plan, was that involved in the renewal? I don't believe so. That was in 2011 when you did the renewal, right? Which master plan are you referring to? Our, our township that when you looked into it because that expires I, I, is that 2016 or is that am I thinking of Parks and Rec expires this 2015 or next year I should say yes, it, it was like it was three years ago okay it was three I, I, I don't think we made any changes we reviewed it but we didn't make any changes I was the chairman of the county okay but there wasn't any changes so okay so it's just yeah, yeah, everything's updated Master Our plan. master plan, because I didn't see it in there. I just that. want to make sure. There was a there was a section that describes the facilities, but it, it was very uh, basic. Now. I couldn't get any information as far as where hydrants, and <laughs> pipe sizes, and all that. It's the, where are the connections to the three other municipalities adjacent to it? That's not shown anywhere. Um, I actually had to call IRA to get what they had. Look through the archives and try to put piecemeal things together. Um, just from my understanding, what's your system is doing? Okay. And where we're going to have, go ahead, Joe. Thank you so much. What I was informed is this is just a review. Um, they're not even going to come out into the field. They're just going to stop at the station, look at our inventory list, look at our maps. Um, for them to do a full blown ISO rating, they would come out into the township and do their own flow testing and all that. Um, and look at your hydro systems. And so this is just a review at our fire station itself. Okay. And then look at your maps that you supply. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. And Don wasn't able to make it tonight. So, all right. So that's our discussion. Thank you. We're going to move on to item number four. Motion to approve relief of payment by Sunco Energy to Marine City Fire Authority for services rendered. I'll make a motion to approve relief of, excuse me, relief of payment by Sunco Energy to Marine City Fire Authority for services rendered. Can I get a second? Full well, second that. Any discussion? Looking at the things that are you going to talk about? I just had them for backup in case anybody. Oh, okay. I was just looking at all the things that they. I'm sorry. Um, I was looking at all the things that they do for the community, and they do a lot. They give a lot of things to the fire departments themselves. Would you like to explain the yeah. situation? I've never seen that letter and what they give to the fire department. Is well, the that training. That I don't know. Um, they, the training, <coughs> yes, they do yeah. do free training. They, they said they offer cause and origin fire investigators, free of charge, uh, first response to gas emergencies, trained all fire departments in a three year rotating schedule, free of charge. Uh, their members belong to a bunch of stuff, fire, re, you know, fire related. Um, and they provide low-cost training to area fire departments, and they sponsor the emergency services uh, appreciation breakfast. And basically, they're just very active in local mun municipality fire departments. Yes, they do do that. Um, the only concern that I have on that is this was at one of their municipalities, one of their buildings. Um, it wasn't out on the street anywhere. 
testimony, but that's up to the board to decide what they want to do with it. Um, I, my I submitted it um, as I was supposed to. <coughs> they returned it with a with the letter. With the letter. There really wasn't a fire, right? I mean, no, there wasn't. There was the first one was a um, six-inch main leak um, on Starville and Angling, and the second one was two days later at Starville and Angling. There, one of their outbuildings, um, which was a evaporator, was overheating. Um, we were not on, we were not sure what was inside that building. Um, we had heavy smoke chilling when we got there, and all we did is stand by and they come and shut it down. We didn't do anything, but shut the roads down along that area. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else for discussion? All right. Let me put it to a vote. All in favor to approve relief of payment by Sunco Energy from the Marine City Fire Authority. I'm restating the motion. I'm making a motion. Are you asking for a second or you just No, I said all in favor. Oh. Because you oh. you made the <laughs> you made the motion come second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Proposed. Motion carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Lost me. Okay, no, 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 no. All right. We're gonna move to item number six. Motion to approve Parks and Rec summer picnic event for July nineteenth. With a five hundred dollar cap on supplies. I'll make a motion to approve the Parks and Rec summer picnic event for July nineteenth, two thousand fourteen, with a cap of five hundred dollars for supplies. Well, all in favor? I mean, I'm sorry. Second. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> I, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion, so that it reads. It, it, I bet. Well, she made the motion, the so the motion. Right. Right. So we haven't got to discuss it. Let's have discussion, and you can add it at the end if that's agreeable. Okay. Um, you know, I think it's incredibly important to purchase materials locally, even if you have to pay a slight amount higher, you know, a little bit more, to, to keep the, the money circulating in the local economy. I don't like the idea of going out to a different county or, you know, to get some sort of excellent deal at Costco or wherever. Um, we, we, we should try to keep it local. Um, so I, I, my amendment basically is part of this discussion. I would just like the extra words to be added to purchase, uh, you know, the materials locally. I have a, a question, Mr. Zorn, then. Where are we going to find the types of things that we can get from Training center, or whatever that place is. That we can, yeah, um, stuff like that. There's no place locally that we can go to that will give you the items that we are looking for as gifts or prizes for children participants. We were talking about um, having potato sack races and doing little competitions, the wheelbarrow race and stuff like that, and then giving a little token because kids love the little medallion or a little the trophy or yeah, or the stickers or whatever, and I don't know of any place locally that provides the amount that we would be requesting at a reasonable price, considering the fact that our funds are very limited in the Parks and Rec right now. Well, when you made a reference to the $500 cap for supplies in association with a picnic, my understanding was that it was similar to the spring cleanup with the $500 cap that you had for hot dogs, you know, pop and chips. I didn't know there was going to be things like little prizes like that. Um, if you can't find a place locally, that's, you know, another situation. But when it comes to the food, that sort of stuff really should be purchased locally, in my opinion. How can we get the things we needed, like we get from Oriental Trade Company? For uh, I don't think you're able to put a stipulation like that. I mean, we're all for promoting the business in our community, but it's it's, to, it's, the, it's the best. You don't know what the best, best deal is at the, the time, right? Saving the community money. I think this board's pretty pro. This facility we have is a supplier and it's a contraband. 
Okay. All right, so can you restate the motion, Lauren? Uh, motion to approve Parks and Rec Summer Picnic event for July 19, 2014, with a $500 cap for supplies. Can you step in still? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, motion to appoint Bill Wright to the Board of Review. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to appoint Bill Wright to the Board of Review. Can I get a second, please? I'll second him. Okay, discussion. Bill, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Bill Wright. I've been a member of the community for about 14 years. Um, just like to go ahead and serve you guys the best way I know how. Uh, just fade as often as possible. I find the word view as being a good application of my skills and whatever we go ahead and do. Look forward to helping you guys out. That's why I think. That's why I think. Any discussion? I'll renew my motion. I'll renew my second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Motion here is Bill. Oh, don't go away. I got a lot of people working for you. Thank you.